Okay, I think we're live. Hello, everyone. Good morning. It's a Monday. The sun is shining here where I am. Hopefully it's shining where you are. Um, but I just want to say a huge welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. So we are in um, the Make for Tomorrow program and we have a really exciting uh, session this morning with the fabulous artist Mark Titchener. Um, just in case you've not been here before, let me just quickly tell you a bit about uh, Make for Tomorrow. So my name is Lucy. I work for Sussex Partnership Trust. I'm the Arts and Health Lead. Um, our program's called Make Your Mark. Um, and we have been running since the beginning of September this brilliant online participatory arts program called Make for Tomorrow. Um, and it's made up of two strands. There's a visual artist strand. So we've had lots of amazing and continue to have amazing visual artists running um, interactive workshops. Um, live and then they're all recorded so you can tap into them whenever you're free and then we've also got a kind of a performance actor writer strand of the program as well where we've had some really interesting um, individuals from the world of film and television and literature who've been having live in conversations with various people um, including you people at home who've been um, typing in questions and stuff so it's a really brilliant project and it's really about bringing us together having some fellowship using the arts to connect in these days which are pretty challenging and it just feels really good that we can come together with the power of art to um, bring a bit of hope, brighten our days and, um, and learn some new stuff. So um, we're do delivering Make for Tomorrow in partnership. So there's us at the Trust, Make Your Mark, and then we've got the amazing hospital rooms who I'll hand over to Phoebe in a minute and she can tell you a little bit more about them, but they've been curating the visual arts element of the programme. Um, and then we've also um, working in partnership with Arts Over Borders, who've been curating the performance part of the programme. Arts Over Borders, they're amazing. They put on these immersive events with performers and writers in unusual places. And equally, hospital rooms, interestingly, are all about, it's often all about physical space and getting artists into clinical settings to make those mental health settings much more, um, no, kind of positive and creative and just better places to be. Um, so I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to hand over to Phoebe. She'll tell you a bit more about hospital rooms and then she'll introduce you to the amazing Mark and we'll get going with the morning session. All right. And I'll see you guys at the end. Um, I hope you enjoy. Thanks, Phoebe. Thanks, Lucy. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm just going to share a little slideshow to begin with um, to tell you a bit more about what we do. So I'm Phoebe, I'm a project curator at Hospital Rooms. Um, we transform inpatient mental health units with contemporary art, as Lucy said. And today we are super excited to have um, the, one of the a first of two workshops with the incredible Mark Titchener. Um, if you were in London um, earlier this year, you might have seen his work posted around billboards um, across the city. Um, so Mark has worked with us on two projects, on, no, not just two projects, multiple, multiple projects. Um, but I have a few pictures of projects that he's done with us recently. So this was at Bluebell Lodge. Um, and this also had some similarities to the text in his recent work this year. Um, so that was Please Believe at Bluebell Lodge. And at last year, he also did um, uh, artwork at Jasmine Lodge, which was a mother and baby unit in Exeter. So Mark's work is quite text-based and you'll probably um, see that during the workshop as well. Um, but today he'll be asking you to sort of um, interact with your senses, look at different elements of yourself, your hands, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose, um, in, and to sort of build a collective portrait. So these sort of individual portraits that you do today will um, become a collective self-portrait um, and that will be sort of revealed in the festival week which will be in early November. Um, so as this is one of our larger projects there'll be two different workshops so one today um, and one this Friday at 11 a.m. Um, so today we'll be focusing on the eyes, the nose and the ears and then next on, on Friday we'll be focusing on the mouth um, and the hands. So <laughs> that's probably enough for me, but just to say that we want this to be a really interactive um, sort of workshop. Um, so there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Please put in any comments, any questions, any thoughts that you have, um, and I can relay these back to Mark. Just also to say that this is being recorded, but no one is audible or visible apart from Mark and I. Um, and because we want to, because the artwork produced today by everyone will form this um, collective portrait, we would ask you to um, keep hold on to the artworks that you make today and then send them back 
um, to us next Monday the, on the 26th and we'll be in touch um, with details on how to do this. But I think that's all from me. So I'm gonna stop sharing and hand you over to Mark. One second. Um, thank you, everyone. Mark? Thanks, Phoebe. Hi, morning, everybody. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, and thanks to Phoebe and Lucy for the introduction there, telling you a little bit about the project. So yeah, I mean, basically, today is gonna be a kind of mark making and drawing project. Um, so in terms of things that you might need, just um, some simple A4 paper um, and whatever you want to draw with. I have got a selection of pencils and pens and felt pens, which I've found, but you might have charcoal or paint or whatever you prefer to use. Um, it's really, it's really up to you. And in, and, and in the same way, um, this isn't a drawing class in terms of trying to explain to you how to draw. Um, I'm not a drawing person myself. I've, most of my work, as Phoebe was showing you, is, is kind of text-based and most of my drawings done on the computer. So I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm certainly not a kind of draftsman. So um, yeah, my efforts will be kind of, um, you know, an experiment and tentative, but I'll, I'll show you what I do as we go along. So the idea for the project is um, five bits of drawing. Um, I've been thinking a lot about, I guess, as we all have, about how we connect with each other and the, and the world in these last months. And I wanted to think about, I suppose, the senses and how we connect with these, with these five senses we have. So the workshop is gonna be based on five sets of drawings. Uh, we're gonna do three today, which will be drawing the eyes, nose and ears. So we're going to spend 20 minutes concentrating on doing each of those and then on Friday we're going to do the mouth and the hands um, on these A4 sheets. Um, it's up to you how you want to approach that. If you want to spend 20 minutes doing one drawing that's great. If you want to do 20 drawings you know one minute at a time that's fine. The drawings can be any style you want. If you want them to be realistic that's great if you want to do a cartoon drawing if you want to draw from a mirror uh so a kind of observational drawing that's great but maybe also you want to draw from your imagination or your memory so it could be something much more kind of fantastical than than realistic so that's one part of what we're going to be doing is doing this drawing the other the other half of it is whilst whilst we're drawing i want us to, i want to think a little bit about some thoughts and words which might relate to those senses which um, we can jot down at the end. So for instance the first thing we're going to do today is going to be eyes. So you might want to think about something you've seen, um, something you or something you haven't seen, like um, something that, um, yeah, I don't know, just some thought around that sense. I was thinking, you know, it can be quite abstract. It could be, um, I was thinking about with the mouth, it could be about, you know, a taste, or it could be about saying something or something um, that you want to say. So they could be, they're just, a, it's almost like a kind of little thought that we can attach to, to these drawings. And at the end uh, of the project, um, what, I want, what we're going to do, as Phoebe said, is put all of the drawings of the various senses together into a book and pos uh, hopefully an animation as well. So it will form a kind of group self-portrait. So we'll have a section, for instance, on seeing and eyes. So we'll have the drawings all laid out together there and those will be complemented by these thoughts and bits of writing around the sense of sight. So I hope um, that all makes sense. And then we're going to scan all the drawings together when, you, when you're ready with them and put, put them together into this publication. So um, Phoebe, does that sound like everything we need to, I need to say before we get started on doing some drawing? Yeah, that sounds really good. Um, and yeah, just to say again, if you have any um, sort of comments or you would like to share um, the processes that you're doing to make these drawings please just uh, pop them in the Q&A box at the bottom and I can relay them to Mark um, but yeah I think that's really good let's get started 
So one thing I realised this morning, not being particularly good at drawing anyway, was when I picked up my pencil, I realised that actually it feels quite weird to just start drawing stuff straight away. So what I thought we could do together is just spend a couple of minutes just doing some kind of warm up exercises. So if you've all got whatever you're using to make, I also noticed I managed to hurt my hand at the weekend, so I can't hold a pencil very well. Um, <laughs> we are, yeah, so if we're gonna start, we're gonna start off with just doing some lines. So we're gonna make some horizontal lines. We're just gonna fill this page up with some rough things just to get our hand and our eye in. So you can do as many as you want. So, we, okay, we've got some horizontal lines. So I'm gonna do some vertical ones now. Just going across the page. There's not really any point to this other than just to loosen hand up a little bit. So I'm gonna try and draw them in between, see how accurate I can be. Probably not very. Okay. And then I'm going to try and we're going to do a row of diagonal lines going across. I've got to lift my arm up here because I'm going to bump into the tripod that holds the phone up. <laughs> then again, I'm going to try and do one in between. Okay, and then I'm going to go the opposite direction. A bit harder for me actually going that way for some reason and then again gonna try and draw in between that's quite hard okay so that's some lines so the next one we're going to do some shapes so we do the same thing we do a row of squares going across the page So is this an exercise that you do a lot, marked? I've never done this before in my life. <laughs> I, um, this is based on a very quick Google of uh, drawing exercises. Okay, so we've got a row of squares, and then let's try and draw a smaller square inside these ones. But we all know, don't we, that you have to warm up whatever ex sort of exercise you're doing. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to try and do another one inside of that. Okay, so guess what the next row is. We're going to do triangles. I'm going to do them pointing upwards. Oh, actually, yeah, pointing upwards. And then again, I'm going to draw one inside a smaller one. Okay, and in that space in between, I'm going to draw an upside down one. And then again with a smaller one inside. Okay, right. Next shape. So we're going to do a row of circles going across the page. This is going to be useful today because this our first bit of drawing. It's going to be eyes. So there's going to be some pupils. Again, let's try and do some smaller ones in and again. Right, next we're going to try, we're going to do some spirals across the page. nice that one so it's like a load of letter e's joined together i'm just going to do a few rows of that okay 
Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing going down the page. So we're doing like springs. You can see, I'll try and press a bit harder. Okay, so that's my my idea for ex doing some drawing exercise. You might have some better suggestions about those kind of things. Um, so when you are ready and you feel kind of comfortable, we'll get started on doing the first bit of drawing, which is going to be. Let's get. Where's my cue card? <laughs> going to start off with number one eyes. Okay. So we just had a question come in just asking um how do you normally create compositions for your work because you said you don't necessarily draw that much but how what are the processes that you normally use to create your compositions so i know i most of the drawing i do is in in the computer i use um two programs called uh, illustrator and photoshop so i guess i am drawing but i'm doing it in a kind of mediated way through the software um, so I would, and the other thing I do, I, I guess is what you could call a lot of sampling. So I, I'd like to sort of, I've got a bit of a terror of the, of a, the white page. So I like to start off with so a lot of material. So I'm almost like making digital collages. So I'll, I'll start off with a bunch of found images, maybe from magazines or books. And then I'll sort of scan elements of those in, start overlaying them. And then sometimes sort of shapes and forms. Um, come from those but when I normally I start with writing so I start off with some words and those the shape of the words on the page will quite often make make up the composition so this is really quite different so in in in, in, in this this sort of process now where we're going to start off with this the dreaded blank page <laughs> um so I, I was doing a webinar the other week and there was a writer there and she was talking about how much comfort she felt that every time she started writing there was another blank page like it was a chance to start again so it's, people have very different perspectives on the, yeah. what that might be so I've got kind of two bits of paper here this one here I'm going to do my on the right I'm going to do my drawing and on this one I'm going to while we're, while we're drawing I'm going to um jot down any thoughts I have about some words around seeing. Um, I had a funny thought already actually, which was to do that. I've noticed now when I watch people on TV and I like in programs that are more than six months old, I, I kind of wince if they shake hands. Like that's kind of makes me. <laughs> well, because of COVID. Yeah, I guess it just feels really weird even to sort of just do uh... anyway. But yeah, that's, 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 I'm going to just jot down some thoughts whilst we're doing it. So I hope you guys are ready and let's see if we can get started using whatever material um, you've got at hand. I'm going to just start with a pencil, I think. Um, like I say, it might be that you um, want to do some quick drawings or, and let's say I put eyes, you might draw, want to draw both your eyes or one of them. So mm. I'm going to start off with trying to do one. Someone's also just said that they have a similar thing when people are sharing drinks, they can't <laughs> watch it on television, or that it's so foreign to us now watching yeah, that yeah. happen on television. It's all to do with the senses, isn't it, right now? Well, exactly. The lack of, lack of senses. So I'm going to get started. I'm, hopefully you're watching, looking at your own bits of paper rather than what I'm doing. I know it's Monday morning as well, so kind of like uh, starting off looking at our eyes is uh, probably a bit cruel.
I guess also it doesn't really matter how like how much you want to draw around your eyes. So I mean, you've got your whole, you know, obviously we don't want to get into drawing our whole faces, but if you want to draw some of the area kind of around as well, because it really depends on what um, style of drawing you're going to make. And as it, we're not trying to encourage you really to think about, um, I guess, thinking about self-portraiture. So there's no reason why yours should bear any resemblance to what I'm doing. I mean, also, you hope you're drawing your eyes rather than mine. So we've just had um, someone just asking, um, is Mark using a mirror? I am, that's, I've got a, um, that's what this circle is by the side of, um, so the other thing I, I was, you might wanna do um, is if, if you've got a cam, like a phone camera or something like that, you could always use the, your phone camera or, um, um, or, or even, I suppose, you know, if, you, if it's, you could always draw someone else, you know, if you want to kind of pair up and but I think if, if possible, if you can, I've just ruined mine actually. <laughs> Not that there's, um, anyway, <laughs> maybe what I'm doing is trying to do, trying to be too clever here. I think I need to be a bit more straightforward. So I'm going to, And you, and you also mentioned that if people, you can also draw it from memory or your imagination. Yeah, it's not, yeah, I mean, that might feel more appropriate anyway to you. Um, it's actually what I'm, I mean, I'm, when I was saying about trying to jot down some notes while you're drawing, but of course drawing uses up a lot of concentration. So it's quite hard to kind of do that. So you might, you might, want to take a bit of a pause at the end and just uh, write down something. And can, um, is it about drawing one eye or is it, can you do multiple eyes? Can yeah, you I think, yeah, that's a good point. I think we can, you can do multiple ones. I, um, I'm going to do some quick ones in a minute because I, um, I thought I'd try and get one which looked half decent, but, um, Not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess one of the things with using like pencil is it kind of um, make, means you spend a bit more time on it. So what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to, I actually have borrowed my daughter's felt pens and I'm going to try and just do some quick ones with felt pen where I'm not kind of trying to make it too detailed or anything. So yeah, I mean, I guess when I was thinking about eyes, I was thinking about all of them together. Well, you know, all of the drawings we'd make together rather than it being like a case of you drawing 50, but if you were one of you, but I'm gonna, yeah, let's see. Um, I've got a pen here now. See if I can do any better with a pen. No, that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm finding a biro quite good because you can like scratch into it a bit. Yeah, I think that's why I went for pencils straight away because I think it felt like you're not having to be so kind of decisive. Um, I think what I'm going to try on the next one is to do both of them. Let's try. My natural inclination is to get another piece of paper so I can hide these drawings, but I'm going to stay on this one and try and do two um, together. For some reason, I have started drawing my right one every time. Mm. Probably because I'm really short-sighted in my left eye. <laughs> So I guess in order to do both, I just kind of need to draw a little bit of the nose, top of the nose in just to get a idea of where that all fits in. I've got the disadvantage that you can actually see me, so you can see how this doesn't look anything like my. Uh... Yeah, Mark, we've just had a question just asking, have you ever attempted a self portrait before fully? Not for a long time. <laughs> um, not a drawing. I mean, I think when I was younger, I probably did quite a lot of them because it's sort of um, something that we do. I did. I, I did a, a piece for an exhibition last year, which was a self-portrait, um, which was a photographic self-portrait printed on a mirror. And it was actually a photograph of the back of my head. <laughs> so it was like, it was, it was a bit like that famous Magritte painting with the guy looking at his um, head in a mirror and seeing the back of his head in the mirror. So it was a kind of bit of a surreal thing. Yeah, I think after this, I probably won't um, ever try it again because uh, it clearly needs a lot of practice. And um, you just had someone saying that they um, unfortunately have to leave now, but they've really enjoyed it so far and they'll be back on Friday. Um, and just to say on that, do um, this will be recorded and will be uploaded onto the Make Your Mark YouTube channel. So you can, if you do miss a section today, you can rewatch it there. So yeah, I guess once we kind of want, I was trying to think a bit about um, writing some, I mean, it might be that when you've done, got a drawing you're, you're happy with, there's something that comes to your mind in the in the way that the drawing kind of looks um, that might help with thinking about a few words to do with seeing. And it's better to write those words on a separate bit of paper, not the paper. We, well, it doesn't matter too much. I think whatever, whatever you prefer really. Great. So what I'm going to do when we get all the drawings is we're going to scan them all um, so that we can return them and then I'll be able to sort of lay them all out on the page nicely together. So 
So just to say also, we're, ne we're nearly coming up to time for the eyes section. Um, so actually, so you can see 20 minutes doesn't isn't such a long time, is it, for this kind of exercise? Because it really does take a little while to kind of start working something up. Right, I, when, when we get to 20 minutes, we'll take a break for a minute and just uh, have a little think about a bit of writing to go with it. You might, I mean, the thing is also, if you want to return to, if you're not kind of finished and you want to return to yours, that's afterwards, you can do that. Ooh. I also wanted to think about, it looks funny sort of just having these one things on the page, but thinking about isolating those kind of elements. So, yeah, we, you know, we would normally think about our senses, our senses would all be kind of, you know, kind of mush together as it were. So I, I like the idea with this, that we will just be concentrating on thinking about one of them for a minute. So we've probably got about two minutes left on the eyes. Okay. So I don't know if you've been having some thoughts about what you might write at the end of it. So what we'll do is we'll do those two minutes and then maybe we could just spend another minute or something just trying to... What I've been, I think one of the things that I was thinking about, um, so I live in, in London and um, I was thinking a lot about how I would have liked to have seen things like, you know, landscape or the hills or the sea, like those kind of spaces. Um, So it might be an observation, it might be something kind of, I don't know, a bit more abstract maybe. I mean, I, I seem very dark around the outsides of them today. <laughs>
probably about there on your TV. Yeah, that's uh, that's um that's good for the eyes, I think. Right, so maybe that's great. So maybe we're gonna you've got your drones your eyes, so maybe we we'll just spend a second, just a minute or two having um a thought about jotting down some of the notes that you might have or thoughts you might have had. And maybe it's something just that came into your mind while you were doing that drawing. Maybe it's not like I see something or I saw something. Maybe it's just what you were thinking about whilst um, whilst you were doing that. So I've been thinking. What I was thinking about really was to do with to do with landscapes and imagining being on a kind of being able to look out onto a horizon where you can't see any anything you know like on the side of the sea or kind of like on the top of a mountain or something like that so i'm going to write something down to do with that really straightforward i'm going to say I wish that I could see the horizon. I actually put something very similar. <laughs> yeah, everyone's going to have, I wish. <laughs> I put, I want to see the sea. Great. So, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's just, it's almost like a thought bubble coming out of that drawing, really. So you put them together, okay. get something like that. Mm. So, so also, um, you know, if you want to do that at the end of the session as well, that would be great. So, I'm going to have a sip of water. So the next, do we need a minute or two to do that, or we? I think I think um, we can move on to the to the nose now. If if um, number yeah. two. Yeah. The nose. But well, I'm hopeful that I'm going to be a bit better drawing noses than eyes. Because when I was um, doing self portrait drawings when I was a teenager, I did like drawing noses for some reason. I find it incredibly difficult to draw noses. I've never been able to draw one that actually looks like a nose. Look like I was thinking of this book, which is just behind me, actually, which is a book of Rembrandt's drawings, where they all have these kind of uh, extraordinary drawings. His noses are always kind of extraordinary, kind of. Mm. See, these drawings are made up of lots of tiny little marks, because these are made for etchings. But yeah, I probably shouldn't look at these, because these are some of the best portraits anyone's ever done. It's going to make them <laughs> even worse. Okay, so let's get a fresh piece of paper and we're going to have a go drawing our noses. Okay. Which hopefully. We've only got one of them, so that kind of makes, helps matters. I'm thinking about again about something we might write about. The sense of smell is a very powerful thing. Um, maybe what something that we don't think about so much, but it's a sense that we can't turn off. You know, we can't close our eyes. We can close our eyes, but we certainly can't stop ourselves from. So often, our kind of, um, you know, the way that we might remember a place or um, our first impressions of place could come from smell more than, more than from other senses. It's 
Someone's just um, said, um, asked me to tell you, Mark, that um, they thought that your eyes were very good. That's very kind of you. I think hey, I, I probably got that thing on Zoom, which is like making everything slightly, you know, it's like it's for people who are a bit vain. So it's um, making everything look a bit blurred. So it probably looks better than it was in, in real life, but thank you. So I, I guess I'm drawing nose kind of head on here, but there's no, I'm going to try it in a minute and do one from the side. Um, it's a really weird shaped thing when you just draw it in isolation, isn't it? It's a, So I think when we get a whole bunch of these drawings together, they're going to be, it's going to be quite a strange kind of presence just to have, you know, like a big group of drawings or all of uh, these kind of, um, disconnected kind of elements, which I think is quite interesting. So on Friday, we're going to do, I thought today we'd start off with these, these ones, which maybe were a bit, um, easy is not the right word because then none of it's easy, but on Friday, we're going to try and do hands, which is good. I think it's probably the most challenging. So I think in advance about good, good ways of doing that. I guess the advantage with the hands is it's kind of easy to kind of see. Um, the other thing with the hands is that obviously you can make all sorts of different sort of shapes and stuff with it. So have a think about how um, that might work. You can, of course, just draw around your hand. You get a pretty good uh, impression of it that way. think if I join these together it will look us. That does look really good. <laughs> really. <laughs> well. I'm really struggling with the nose. Do you have any tips on where to start? <laughs> well, I always start with the nostrils. That's my kind of, um, but I guess it really depends on your the shape of your nose. Um, I guess in a way it's, it is tricky because it's sort of, um, it's a sort of less distinct kind of form in a way. Also, if you think, you know, like with a lot of drawing, you think about breaking it down into different shapes, mm -hmm. so you've got this kind of, I mean, I, everyone's nose is different, but you know, you have the kind of the large kind of, round section here and then almost like to like this kind of it's not a cylinder but this other you know part kind of coming down um i'm gonna i think i might try and do one from this yeah try and do one from, from the side as well so i'm gonna um i'm using a mirror so i have to kind of Talking and looking sideways is quite tricky. <laughs> so again, I'm starting with the nostril. It's quite unnatural because I guess we don't normally see ourselves from this kind of angle very much. Oh, 
almost something's not quite right here. <laughs> Are anyone else finding the um, the nose harder than or easier than the eyes? Um, let us know if you are. It'd be interesting um, because I'm finding the nose really difficult. Just uh, one of these things to draw. I've got a kind of mess of last draw. <laughs> Someone said that they're finding the nose harder. <laughs> I got my, so I got that in completely the wrong place there. Yeah, I think I, the one I was worried about is doing the ears because I think that's going to be a tricky one. But actually, I think what we're what we're learning is that they're all really tricky. Yeah. I mean, I think the way that I'm I'm trying to draw with like kind of pencil in a bit of a sketchy way is 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 partly because I don't feel very confident doing it. So it's a kind of way of sort of finding your way around the shape a bit. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. one thing that can help is, I, so I've, I've got, the light where I am is is all kind of, it's, it's from above. So sometimes, um, you know, if you have a sort of strong light in one direction, it can make something more kind of visible. Um, So if you've got a wind, you know, if you go towards a window or something like that, so you. Um... So Jane said that it's definitely hard to draw the nose. And um, we've had an another comment saying, very hard to draw the nose without connecting it to the eyes, um, or the brows and the top of the mouth, which is quite interesting. Yeah, I, I agree. We're gonna kind of end up with, uh... it's, almost, it's like, I guess when you're drawing the face, like what quite often what you do is you would put in these sort of points, you know, you kind of eye, eyes, ear, um, eyes, nose, and mouth, and you'd kind of use those to kind of, um, you know, kind of almost make like a map of where everything goes together. But yeah, we kind of got these these sort of floating kind of elements. It's definitely I found it hard doing that from the side. Um, I th I'm quite. I'm going to try the other side, which I think is going to be a disaster because um, I've got something wrong with my right eye and I can't see <laughs> properly. So um, this is probably going to be really bad. We've got about seven minutes left on this exercise. So let's have a look. Well, that's OK. I'm going to go for sort of sideways. How about that? Um, Yeah, this is maybe a moment again to have a think about um, what we might. The smell is a really strange one um, to think about writing about. I think what I was thinking about in this was um, so one of the things that I haven't done for ages is. Um, He's gone on a underground train, <laughs> a tube train. And I was thinking about how it always felt horrible to be kind of surrounded by every, all these sort of random uh, mm. kind of, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Perfumes and aftershaves and less pleasant smells mm. that were kind of assaulting you kind of constantly. Um, But maybe I should try and think about something a bit more pleasant than that. <laughs> Another nose is a very hard comment. Yeah. It's interesting also to think about because, yeah, thinking about this time and 
um, the senses and things, because obviously one of the symptoms of COVID is a loss of taste. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah, loss of taste and smell, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think thinking about writing something to do with smell as well so is quite is quite difficult. Though I think this is hard, but I think I my noses are definitely better than my eyes. I don't know. Maybe it's just a bit. Um... Well, I'm gonna. We're gonna. So I guess we're gonna finish up in a few minutes. So. You just try and concentrate, like whilst you're doing this last bit of drawing, think about something that you might be able to jot down about sense of smell. And like, I think Fabi make, made a really good point there, which is to do with this losing smell potentially. Maybe that's something that we've become a bit more you know, a sense we've become a bit more conscious of because of that symptom. I think, what I think I'm going to do on the next one is when, I, when we did the writing, I'm going to write it onto the, so I'm just going to put it underneath the last one. How, how are we doing on time, Phoebe? We've probably got another three or four minutes on the nose. Funnily enough, when someone was saying about a self-portrait, um, I did actually do a, a, a self-portrait for something um, a few months ago for a gallery in South End called Focal Point, and they asked all of the artists who'd ever been in an exhibition there to give self-portraits, which they were going to print up on a tea towel, which they were going to sell as a fundraiser, a bit like you people do at kids' schools and stuff. And I. I completely forgot to do it um, until the last minute when I had to post it and I ended up doing it first thing in the morning without my glasses on all my contact lenses in um, like and, and sending it straight off in the post without really looking at it so I have no idea how bad that was um, I'll have to wait and see when the tea towel comes <laughs> One thing I didn't really realise is how how different people's nostrils are mm. <laughs> as well. Not that you don't really look at your nostrils a lot, but mine are very like pointy and long, and some people's are like little tunnels. Mine seems to be getting bigger and bigger, <laughs> and older. Mm. 
I'm struggling to think about what to write, which is uh, not very good. Are going to get any better? So I'm going to leave that on there. So I'm going to move over to. I, I, I guess what I was thinking about was a way of writing down what I was talking about before, which was to do with this kind of experience of other people. So I'm going to write down. don't mix the smell of other people. I think a lot of the time we're supposed, there's this sense that, that you know, we should, there's look, we, we're, we're missing things, but actually that's something I don't miss at all. Someone's just said um, that they've never looked at their nose um, for this long before, and it feels like quite a mindful activity. Yeah, you know, well, I guess that's the thing with all of, all of these things, isn't it? It's just spending a bit of time. Um, and I guess, we, um, it, it, it's interesting as well because it, they get very they're very abstract shapes aren't they mm. when you look at them on their own so i think the next one we're going to do is going to be our ears which is going to be it's quite a tricky one i'm going to try and do it from um the mirror but you might also want to i don't know if some of you if any uh, might have um, a, a phone if you you know you could take a picture and draw draw from uh, that, uh, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to try and, I don't know how easy it is even to take a photograph of your <laughs> That wasn't very good. Ugh. <laughs> uh, one, one note on that front is turn the flash off. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's just said that they've got two monitors set up um, and have never looked properly at their face from the side before and didn't realise um, that they have a very straight nose, which is good. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, it is, I think it is quite shocking when you see your face from a, a different angle. Yeah. I'm definitely going to... I think I'm going to sort of try and draw... It's actually quite... Uh, maybe so if you've got someone with you, you could get them to photograph it. I'm on my own, so I'm trying to... Can't even see the button on the phone. That's a bit better. So I'm going to try it from life, and then if that doesn't work, I'm going to maybe try and draw um, the photo. Strange photo. Right. So for our final bit of drawing for today is going to be save the tricky one to the really tricky one to the end is the ears definitely something that we don't probably spend so much time looking at okay so uh know what you don't want to use i think i'm going to keep going with, with this pencil that i've been using because i'm going to, and i'm going to draw the first one almost like from the front so what I can see from the front. They are an incredibly weird and complicated shape. It is. Yeah. I don't know if this is true, but I think I remember someone telling me that ears are the, never stop growing. It's like the only part of the you that doesn't stop. Reminds me of the BFG. 
PFG had to. Hopefully, do. they didn't get to that size, but, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a very complicated shape because it's got all sorts of bits. It's quite interesting in terms of shade and light and dark as well in your ear because there's so many different le like levels of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. That isn't what I can see at all. <laughs> I mean, this is, I imagine when we've done this one, this will be the one that looks the most kind of strange because it's, again, like you're saying, you know, you're not necessarily going to have ever spent very much time just looking at your ear. quite difficult to kind of find well, I think talking and doing this is quite tricky <laughs> I don't know if has any if any of you tried using colour on this because uh, that's one thing I haven't. Again, it gets a, a more difficult as soon as you start trying to do that. Got some definitely got some quite dark areas on this. Apologies if you just heard my tummy rumbling then. <laughs> That's what we can write down as the comment. We can exactly. hear Mark's tummy. <laughs> yeah, so again, sort of thinking about something we might write about hearing. I mean, hearing is quite interesting in a way because I think you can talk about things that you might have heard, but there's also this idea of, you know, we talk about, I guess, being heard, you know, by others, as it were. Um, whether we feel that, you know, we're heard or our perspectives are I don't know, I think the ear seems is a little bit quicker to draw than the other ones. Maybe we just loosened up a bit. I think maybe you're also less precious about your ear because your nose kind of and eyes sort of define 
how you you don't feel like you're defined by the shape of your ear <laughs> yeah maybe not yeah i don't know and also i guess it's an interesting point isn't it because i think also with with a lot of the way people kind of you know say with social media they use kind of images of themselves in a very sort of idealized kind of way i mean what does a beautiful ear look like i don't know um, someone's just said they've had to leave, but thanks so much for a fantastic hour, Mark and Phoebe, um, and see you on Friday. So yeah, thank you very much for joining. And um, if you want to um, re-watch this, it will be on the Make Your Mark YouTube and we will be here again Friday at 11 a.m. So thanks very much for joining. Um, another question yeah. um, is just saying, Mark, how was it to be nominated for the Turner Prize and how did it change your artistic career? Um, well, it was a long, it was a long time ago, so I don't really remember too much. But what I do remember was it was the first time I kind of, it, it meant quite a lot because I could sort of, because in terms of my family, it was like, uh, <laughs> everyone kind of knew what it was and it was almost like the first time everyone anyone not it sounds a bit mean but it, it, you feel like people who aren't kind of necessarily involved in arts kind of know what it is so it's kind of it's you feel like you I don't know like it's sort of important for them you know like it felt important for my family to kind of um yeah have, having sort of supported me being an artist to kind of get to that point where you can kind of say, oh, well, actually kind of, you know, achieve this as it were. Um, so it was a nice, it was nice to do that. And it was nice to kind of do an exhibition. Um, you know, a lot of people see those exhibitions. So it was, it was fun doing that. It's very different days to now, because it was, when I did it, it was um, 2006. So you didn't have, I guess, this, the whole thing with kind of the internet so much. It was only, so prob you know, like it, the main sort of reviews and all that stuff were in the newspapers. And you didn't get, I think it would be quite scary now with kind of everyone sort of telling their opinions, you know, very quickly. So in a way you're quite, I felt, you know, I think it's probably very different now um but yeah it was fun certainly didn't get nominated for my drawing Did you get nominated for a specific show? Yeah, so I got nominated for a show that I had in uh, um, in Bristol at a gallery called the Arnold Feeney, um, which was, um, yeah, it was like the biggest sort of show I'd done at that point. Um, in, yes, yeah, so the show was in 2005. And it was like really the first sort of show where I could kind of put all the different kind of work that I'd been making together in one space. So it was a, it was like a um, really good opportunity. So we've just had another question is saying, do you want us to send in the original artworks or scan these in ourselves? And we did just have a discussion about this before we, um, we started the webinar. Um, it would be super, super if you could send us the originals um, and we will be in touch with the exact address. Um, and these can be sent on Monday, next Monday, um, the 26th. Um, but if you if you don't, if you can't post them for whatever reason, then um, a scan is fine. Just try and make sure it's the highest quality possible. But but yeah, a scan is, is fine. Um, uh, we'll organise the posting, won't we? We're not expecting anyone to... We'll, we'll organise a collection, won't we, for most of the 
Yeah, so we'll either organize a DPD to collect or we can, um, or we can, yeah, uh, reimburse you for postage um, or something like that. So Lucy from Make Your Mark will be in touch with them um, exactly how to do that. Um, and we'll maybe mention something at the end too. Yeah, I mean, all, um, the only reason the, for, for, for posting them really is just so we can kind of get this quality uniform. But if you really, um, if you do want to scan them, if you can just make sure you kind of scan them at, at least um, 300 DPI. Um, and if you want to scan them in color, um, that'd be great. And then just as a JPEG or a TIFF or PDF, just something that we can open um easily that would be great and try the other side how are we doing for time baby have i so, got to try my left ear <laughs> yeah so it's 10 past so these um because um mark's um is one of the larger projects these workshops are for an hour and a half well in in between an hour and an hour and a half. Um, it's really whatever you um, feel comfortable doing. Um, but we can carry on for, I think, maybe another five to 10 minutes and then we can wrap up. That's okay. I'm really interested to see how people have, um approach them in kind of different kind of drawing styles like I say I'm kind of just doing this kind of quite generic kind of pencil kind of drawing just because I, I guess I feel a bit more at ease drawing in that way for some reason so someone's had to leave now but um they said it's been really interesting so thank you so much for joining um and hopefully we'll see you on friday too and we've also just had another question saying can we keep um can we share what we've done so far online or do you want to keep them for the big reveal no i think it's fine to share them i mean the thing is is it's going to be what what's going to be the big reveal is seeing them all together so i think if you absolutely if you'd like to kind of share them that's fine And we've just had another, um, and sorry, Lisa, who sent the um, the recent question. Um, if you hashtag um, make for tomorrow, which is the name of the program, that would be great. Um, and you can also tag in um, make your mark and hospital rooms as well. And then we'll share it on our stories too. Um, but that'd be brilliant to see what you've done so far. Um, thank you. And then we've just had an, another person, Jane Baxter saying, um, I'm not very technically minded. Can we photo it and then send it on? Um, that's that's absolutely fine too. Um, I'm sure yeah, most of us now have a very good quality. So. Yeah, I mean we can work with whatever. So I guess what the, the, the idea is if if you know if we can get them in the post and scan them, that's that's the kind of best thing. Um, so just the main the main thing is to get um, you know to be able to see what you've done. So. Don't don't worry too much if you you know if if it is a case that yes you you can photograph them and, and send them if it's, it's the easiest for you that's absolutely fine. Although you've also asked them um, if you if we can give you our postal address and I'm just going to type the address down, um, which is the hospital room's address and we'll be collating them. So I'm going to post that on the Q and A and hopefully everyone will be able to see it. Um, I'll do that now. So the address that I've just posted, the host room's address, um, it's uh, the postcode E26GG. And you can also find that, hopefully you'll be able to see the, the reply to Jane's comment that I've just put. But if you Google hospital rooms, it will also come up with that address on Google. So you can find it there too. And um, we will of course reimburse any postage. Um, so if you also let us know by email, 
um, how much the postage was, we can reimburse you. Um, and the email address is info at hospital-rooms.com. But also just to say that Lucy from Make Your Mark will be in touch via email to everyone who's joined today um, with really clear instru instructions of um, where to send your work. And I think Mark, we're probably coming up to the last bits, um, last few minutes. If you yeah, wanna... so again, if we just use these last bit of drawing time just to kind of think about something we might like to write down for the comment about, um, hearing or being heard. Um, again, something we see, you, you kind of seeing what, what kind of thing we're coming up with. Again, I'm super curious to know what you guys have written down. I know it's a bit of a, it's kind of weird looking at drawing it, drawing these things and then um, writing something down is even, probably even more difficult in a way. Um, actually really reminds me of um there was this photograph that went viral of donald trump and his notes for for a, a meeting with um some sort of i don't know family or it was some sort of crisis and i saw on his notes it said i hear you <laughs> almost like a reminder to be empathetic which i thought was quite funny One of the things that I've actually really missed is going to concerts and that kind of stuff, actually. That's something that I kind of um, have. I know people who, you know, it's very, it's been a very difficult period for everyone, hasn't it? But particularly for people, you know, people working in the sort of live music and events stuff, it's been really difficult. So I'm going to just take a minute to have a little think. I think my drawings probably did get a bit better as time went on. Got a bit, um, kind of joined together a little bit. bit like a really strange face. See, I, I bear in mind that I knew what I was going to ask. I could have prepared this and prepared some thoughts about what I was going to write down, but I haven't. So I'm, I'm coming to this exactly as you are. <laughs> okay, so I, what I've been thinking about is actually some sometimes where it's felt very quiet and very kind of still more than normal. So I'm just gonna write something down about that. It's quite an abstract one. Okay, so I think um, 
if um yeah if you want to keep thinking about stuff to write down in terms of the text um whilst we're talking that's great um so thanks everyone for taking part um, i hope you enjoyed that i i despite my fear of drawing i did enjoy doing it great thank you mark it's been really it's been so nice just to sort of slow down and um yeah observe ourselves <laughs> it's been nice to sort of have that moment of reflection as well um and you do get really engrossed in the different body parts and things like that so yeah thank you everyone um for joining i know some of you had to leave early um do you think mark will do the next session for an hour and a half or an hour probably be an hour the next one because we've only got two we've got hands and um mouth next time so we, if we do yeah we'll probably um just be an hour unless anyone wants to kind of recap on some of the bits from today but yeah, yeah. wonderful so yeah please join again next week at 11 a.m and we'll be back to do the last two um elements which are the um, mouth and the hands i'm going to hand back now to lucy who will give you a few more um uh, pointers and um, we'll be in touch about where to send the artworks. Um, we just had a message in saying they've enjoyed it so much, so interesting to draw the ear um, and um, they've never studied it before. So thank you for that and thank you for everyone else who joined. Um, over to you Lucy. Oh yeah I agree that was great. Um, I'm, I'm the same as you Mark, I'm not very good at drawing so I found that a bit um, stressful at the beginning but it's true you sort of get into it it's quite um, meditative in a way um, but yeah I hope everyone um, wherever you are whether you're on a hospital ward in your front room at your kitchen table in an office somewhere yeah I hope you enjoyed that and um, first of all I have uh, well I have two apologies first of all I'm really sorry because I know that if you received an email from us at Make Your Mark we said this workshop was for an hour. So huge apologies, Mark and Phoebe and everyone who's come along. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad that quite a few of you have managed to stay to the end. Um, and yes, uh, Phoebe is right. All of the um, events and workshops on Make Tomorrow, um, we're recording them. Don't worry, we're not recording you. We're just recording the people who are presenting. And we um, give us a minute and we will upload it to the Make Your Mark website and also our YouTube channel so you can catch up. And if you started your drawings and you want to keep going and you want to add to them, that is absolutely fine. Go for it. Um, and we will be in touch with everyone about um, how to get your work to mark. So uh, if you can't post it for whatever reason, be in touch with us we'll, uh, after, we've, after we've sent the email out to you because we can send you an address envelope in the post so you can pop your stuff in there and send it back to us so we don't have to worry about um reimbursing stamps and all that kind of stuff but we will be in touch with really clear instructions so for now just enjoy your drawings keep working on them if you want to and if you haven't signed up for friday session please do um i know quite a few of you have already but it'd be really great and also if you've enjoyed this and and you want to share it with your friends families carers other colleagues whoever else please do because we the more the merrier we'd love it um yeah we, we i think um, the more eyes and nose and ears and mouths and hands uh, Mark gets, the better. I think it'll be a really interesting um, depiction of, our, uh, yes, it's a self-portrait, but it's everyone together, so it's exciting. Um, so just one last thing for me today, to say a huge thank you to um, our tech partner, COGAP, who uh, supports us in setting up all the technical side of this so that we can meet virtually. And also a big thank you to our funders, which is Arts Council England and um, NHS Charities Together. Um, the Trust Charity Heads On, who are amazing, they fundraised for us to be able to put this whole programme on. So we're really grateful to Heads On and Arts Council and NHS Charities Together for funding us so we can be here. Um, and I think that's about it from me and all of us here. But yeah, I hope you've had a really good time. Thank you so much for giving your time and being here together with us. It's it's such a pleasure that we can come together and I hope to see you on Friday. If um if you haven't signed up, do go to the Make Your Mark website. So everything is on there. It's uh, makeyourmarknhs.org. So you can find out all the information about all of Mark and his work and his project and all the other stuff that's happening. But I think that's about it for now. And we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch with uh, you to tell us how to share your work with us. All right, we'll see you Friday, hopefully. Thanks, Phoebe. Thanks, Mark. That was great. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a good rest of the week.